this idea of, you know, the beginner's mind, if you've ever heard that, I'm sure you have, is to get back into this baby state where it's before you had all these filters. I'm Heather Grish, and this is the Wisdom of the Body podcast. This podcast explores the idea of body intelligence as the real key to learning the knowledge of life, or what we call Ayurveda in the ancient language of Sanskrit. We do that by connecting with today's creative leaders and experts who will help you listen to your body, trust your gut, and live in deeper harmony with nature. Come join me as we unlock the golden door to clear direct perception and become very deep listeners. You can find the Wisdom of the Body podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also follow us by joining my email at heathergrish.com or on Instagram at heathergrish. I know you're going to love this podcast, so take a second right now to subscribe. We're going to go on a little bit of a journey back some decades. We're going to go back into you as a baby. So this amazing, amazing thing happened where this egg and this sperm came together inside your mother's body and joined together and created what we would say in Ayurveda, this thing called your prakruti, your nature. And then from there, somehow in just these two cells, all the information was there for you to keep developing for you to turn into a zygote, for you to turn into a multicellular organism, grow organs, grow channels, and take in things from your environment inside your mom's body, excrete things out into the environment. And then you grew into this baby and you came out into the world and you came out into the world and it was frightening probably because all of a sudden, with all of this sensory input you just got born and you came out into the universe out of this bath of water inside your mother and you literally just got like shocked you're like what is this place what is this place and it's like there's light and there's air and there was a little bit of light in there when you were in your mom like because the sun came through her body like you know, so you could see some sun, but now there's like so much more light and you're not in this liquid anymore and you have to breathe air. It's like very, very jarring. And the first thing that happened when my son was born, which I thought was really cool because this is also what they do in India. I didn't know they did this here in the U.S. is they put oil on his head in the delivery room. And uh, there's a whole, you know, specific kinds of oils that people use all over the world for this. But it's believed that, at least in India, I don't actually know why my doctors did it. They didn't talk to me about it. But you don't want the soul to leave through the top of the head. So it's like, here, stay. Don't go. Stay here. And I'm sure there's a bunch of wonderful cleansing things that happen too because of the oil. But the bottom line is that it's like a big deal to be in a sensory world. It's a big deal because there's all this information, all this input. And as a child, you know, we still have that sensitivity and we are in the process of developing filters and these filters somehow make it easier for us to navigate through the world, to be able to you know, not have to pay attention to every single little detail in our sensory environment or to not have to feel like every little bit is important for our conscious mind to pay attention to that we sort of begin to get comfortable with certain things that we're used to. And so this idea of, you know, the beginner's mind if you've ever heard that, I'm sure you have, is to get back into this baby state where it's before you had all these filters, before things were labeled good and bad, before the history was there, before the learnings, the good learnings and the bad learnings really come into a situation. And 
as a blank slate. And so when we're doing a cleanse and, you know, connecting after a cleanse, when we are potentially more sensitive after doing a cleanse, because the cleanses actually work on the level of mind and body. We are all holding things in our bodies that we've gone through in our lives. And part of the reasons our minds get afflicted is because things are going on in our bodies and our bodies are allowing certain memories to stay unnecessarily with a certain energy. The beginner's mind does not have residue of the past. It doesn't have residue. It's not that the past didn't happen. It clearly happened. The past has happened, but we're not bringing it into the present with us because we're holding on to something related to that experience, physically or mentally, and both. Okay. So when we're doing a cleanse, we are taking this intentional time to clear a channel or us uniquely as an entire channel. And it can also happen spontaneously, like If you've ever gotten sick, sometimes that's a little bit like a cleanse, right? How about catch a stomach bug and you puke your brains out for five days? That could be a little bit of a cleanse too. And cleansing often involves ingesting different substances to excite something or to do something uncomfortable in order to alter functioning. So alter your excretions, alter your inputs things like that. When done intentionally, we're moving toward a different vision. So we actually have to cocoon ourselves in that process. Because if you don't cocoon, then how do you actually do something different (laughs) if you don't cocoon? Because life is just going to kind of keep giving you the same stimuli to repeat the same patterns, right? It's harder. It's much harder if you don't cocoon. And cocooning could be like a very small thing. You know, I don't look at my phone before 9 a.m. Something, cocooning is removing some sensory inputs or informational inputs. So let's go ahead and come back together. A cleanse typically works on the level of rasa, So rasa is, the word for rasa is the word taste, but it's also the word for your lymphatic system. So rasa is taste and rasa is, it's like what a food tastes like is it's rasa and you're actually like, your ability to taste is rasa. So they're the same. And this layer of rasa, which means your lymphatic fluid or the kind of nutritive fluids in your body, This is the layer or one of the layers that plus your blood, which houses your protective immunity, your immune layer. And so this rasa is actually affected. It's altered when you do a cleanse. This rasa, this taste, the taste is altered when you do a cleanse. So while you may feel like positive effects when you do a cleanse sometimes people also will feel drained after they do a cleanse and it depends on the kind of cleanse that you're doing and you want to make sure that you don't become too depleted but you can sometimes be a little bit weaker after you do a cleanse and that's why the cocooning is extra important because you don't want to all of a sudden have a whole bunch of things coming into your field that you might not feel like you're up for tolerating in that moment, that your immune system would need a little bit more time to rebuild that, to rebuild that rasa, to rebuild that protective layer. It's like a body of water that protects you inside your body. So if you move toxins during your cleanse, it's likely that they were blocking something, a part of you. Toxins will block And when they are removed, the area that was blocked can now receive. Okay. So when you unblock something, the area that was previously blocked can now receive. But the thing is, is that those areas that weren't receiving, they're also like maybe a little bit weaker because they're not practiced. They haven't built their muscles to tolerate that thing 
that it hasn't gotten. So these formerly blocked areas actually need to be like rehabilitated. They need to be trained, basically. So like this, you know, very easy kind of physical example of this is if you get a stent placed, right? And you're not going to go out and exercise like a maniac right away after getting a stent placed in your heart because your body is not going to be used to getting that kind of flow <laughs> for a while, right? So you got to slowly work your way back into stimulation and like the taste of something. So you want to focus on like slow reintroduction of things, gradual and not push things too far. It's like lifting weights, you know, like if you start pumping iron, you're not going to go immediately to lifting a hundred pound barbell. You're going to maybe start at, I don't know, something that is more reasonable for you, depending on your level of strength. Maybe you're going to start at 50 pounds then you're going to go to 60, then you're going to go to 70, then you're going to go to 80. I don't know how your exact way you're going to do it. So you want to reintegrate gradually. You don't want to travel and go out for a night on the town the day you like finish your cleanse. You want to give yourself time to like reestablish these protective juices. And I think these principles are really, really helpful for anything that you've been disconnected from for a long time, anything that you've been disconnected from for a long time. So in a cleanse, like don't go right back into eating what you were eating right before the cleanse as well, right? Because that was part of what was creating the problem, right? You have to go and like, what was it that was going on there and make some modifications. So you want to determine what you need to do differently after the cleanse and do that, right? To reestablish your new baseline. Because everything that's going to come back into your life and your habit stream has to be intentional toward this new intention that you have. So like if you go into a cleanse, setting an intention in the beginning, it has to be held it has to continue to be held that intention throughout even when reintroducing everything has to be aligned with this new intention if you are embarking on a fertility journey and are ready to have your mind blown about what your body is really capable of and how it's impacted by the environment, then check out my book, The Ayurvedic Guide to Fertility. You can actually download the introduction to the book for free on my website at heathergrish.com. That's heather, G-R-Z-Y-C-H.com. Read the intro for free and then buy the rest of this fertility enlightening book pretty much anywhere books are sold. I want to thank you for listening to this show. It brings me great pleasure to provide this content to you. I also want to let you know that I'll be making some very amazing announcements soon. And if you're not already on my email list, then I encourage you to go over to my website and subscribe to my email list so that I can keep you informed about these announcements that are going to be coming up very soon. So my website is heathergrish.com. That's heather, G-R-Z-Y-C-H.com. And I look forward to getting these important announcements to you very soon and connecting. Thank you for tuning in and dropping in with us today. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. I really want to hear your feedback. To learn more about my work, visit heathergrish.com. That's heather, G-R-Z-Y-C-H.com. And meet me here next time on The Wisdom of the Body.